Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Welcome to this wonderful celebration. It's, it's terrific to see everyone here. My name is Jane Lucas, and it is my distinct pleasure to introduce to us a, a person many of us know, Dr. Homer, who will be reading for us the proclamation of the founding of the university. Dr. Homer. Thank you, Jane. A Quasqui Centennial Proclamation. Whereas, exactly 125 years ago, on August the 12th, 1888, Bishop William G. O'Hara laid the cornerstone for a building to house what would open four years later as St. Thomas College, thus kindling the first flames of higher education in northeastern Pennsylvania. For the next half century, Bishop O'Hara and his Episcopal successors would retain ownership of the college even after its staffing and administration were entrusted to religious orders, first briefly the Zaverian Brothers, and then for 45 years, the Brothers of the Christian Schools. Whereas, during their tenure, the Christian Brothers successfully established St. Thomas College as a fully accredited baccalaureate school with its own charter from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Despite the challenges presented by a world war, and then years later, a crippling depression, enrollment grew. In 1938, women were allowed to enter the evening school, and just a month later, the name of St. Thomas College was changed to what it remains today, the University of Scranton. While today's university may seem far removed from what it was under the brothers, the foundation they laid made possible much of what would come decades later. Whereas, in early 1942, with yet another world war underway and the prospects for American higher education highly uncertain, the Society of Jesus accepted Bishop William J. Hafey's invitation to assume not merely the university's administration, but its ownership as well, including its not insignificant indebtedness. An act of faith as remarkable as that of Bishop O'Hara in 1888, when he laid the cornerstone for a structure he did not yet have the funds to construct. Whereas a succession of energetic and visionary Jesuit presidents presided over a transformation unlike any other in the university's history. What in 1950 was a relatively small commuter school with an antiquated physical plant would six decades later become a vibrant, fully coeducational, comprehensive university. The campus completely relocated to the hill section now is adorned with dozens of new buildings, most built within just the past few decades. Over 6,000 students are now enrolled in over 60 undergraduate majors and concentrations and 26 graduate programs that have won national recognition for academic excellence with a dedicated faculty that includes many internationally renowned scholars. Therefore, in grateful recognition of those whose faith and devotion have so shaped our past, the University of Scranton today proudly proclaims the start of a celebration of the 125th anniversary of our founding that will extend through the next academic year. In looking back upon the past, we not only celebrate the achievements of the men and women who have in some way touched or been touched by the university over the past 125 years, but we also recognize the manifold blessings of divine providence that have been bestowed upon us. Thus, we can look forward with confidence to the future, with a prayer echoing the words of our alma mater, that God be ever at our side and goodness fill our days. Proclaimed this day on the 12th day of August in the year of our Lord, 2013, and of the university, 125. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Let us begin together by singing, Christ is made the sure foundation found in your program. Christ is made the sure foundation 
Christ, the head and cornerstone, chosen of the Lord and precious, binding all the church in one. Holy Zion's help forever, and her confidence alone. To this temple where we call you, come, O Lord of hosts, today. With your wonted loving kindness, hear your servants as they pray, and your fullest benediction shed in all its bright array. Grant, we pray to all your people, all the grace they ask to gain, what they gain from you forever, with the blessed to retain, and hereafter in your glory, evermore with you to reign. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon on this simply gorgeous day, as we well know, normal Scranton weather. We gather in the spirit of our first reading, we hear from Paul to the Philippians, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, the Lord is near. My friends, we gather in that spirit. We rejoice in 125 years of great history here at the University of Scranton. We pray for our forebears, those who have brought the school to where it is. But we also gather in confidence about a very bold future that our university will continue. It is appropriate that we begin our anniversary year with the celebration of the Eucharist. Let us now prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are wisdom of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you sit at the right hand of God, interceding for your people always. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. O oh God, who year by year renew for us the day when this university was dedicated, Hear the prayers of your people and grant that in this place, for you there may always be pure study and for us the fullness of redemption. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. 
Your kindness should be known to all. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. God is my shepherd, so nothing shall I want. I rest in the meadows of faithfulness and love. I walk by the quiet waters of peace. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Gently you raise me and heal my weary soul. You lead me by pathways of righteousness and truth. My spirit shall sing the music of your name. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Though I should wander the valley of death, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Your rod and your staff my comfort, and my hope. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. You have set me a banquet of love in the face of hatred crowning me with love beyond my power to hold. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life. Surely your kindness and mercy follow me, all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O oh God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death into life.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. alive the word of god is active it can judge our thoughts bring us closer to the father alleluia 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 Friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to the Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor. The reign of God is yours. Blessed are you who hunger. You shall be filled. Blessed are you who are weeping you shall laugh. Blessed shall you be when men hate you, when they ostracize you and insult you, and proscribe your name as evil because of the Son of Man. On the day they do so, rejoice and exult, for you shall be great in heaven. Thus, it was that their fathers treated the prophets. For your consolation is now. Woe to you who are full. You shall go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now. You shall weep in your grief. Woe to you when all speak well of you. Their fathers treated the false prophets in just this way. My friends, the good news of Jesus Christ. Praise Praise you, Lord Often, Jesus' teachings present a truth that is quite opposite to conventional wisdom, a truth based in paradox. A paradox, as we well know, is something different than what it appears to be. The Beatitudes and the woes, or as we say today, the blessings and the curses, are some of these truths which challenge our normal way of seeing. We are quite familiar with the eight Beatitudes in which Jesus begins the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's Gospel. These Beatitudes are, in Jesus' thinking, a formula for righteous living, life in the kingdom of heaven, and they challenge life as normally imagined. Luke has a different arrangement. He lists four Beatitudes and four woes. Unlike Matthew, Luke speaks of the material conditions of life, poverty, hunger, sorrow, and persecution. All that doesn't make life worth living. Paradoxically, it is this that is blessed. The paradox consists in this, that life is blessed not because of good fortune or misfortune, nor what appears nice or ugly, attractive or repulsive, but solely because of one's relationship with Jesus and his values. 
our bonding with Jesus will transform our lives in spite of material deprivation and bring us happiness, blessings beyond our imagining. Put in other words, seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things will be given to you. The conventional wisdom that we know so well tells us to reach out in search of fun and pleasure, good food and entertainment, comfort, fame and flattery, and to avoid persecution. But Jesus warns, and he warns repeatedly, that such seeking is often deceptive and invariably brings curses and misfortune in its wake. This is why those who seek such pleasures are doomed. The disciple is warned. He or she is warned to be careful. As we are very well aware, Jesus' teachings are full of paradoxes. Simply put, this is because God's ways are not like ours. God's blessings are found in the unlikeliest of places, and his words sta stand our clever sayings on their heads. My friends, on this day of celebration, commemorating founding the University of Scranton, we eloquently acknowledge our storied past, again, thanks to Dr. Homer. But we must also consider our bright future. It is bright because, as Paul reminds us in the first reading, rejoice in the Lord always. I shall say it again, rejoice. The Lord is near. Have no anxiety at all. Let me repeat that. Have no anxiety at all. This confidence for us is rooted in our robust identity as a Catholic and Jesuit university in the 21st century. As a Jesuit university, our university is grounded in the wisdom of God as expressed in Christ Jesus. Christ is our hope in face of intimidating, paralyzing odds. As today's gospel makes clear, Jesus Christ came to us in the strange power of poverty and weakness and died for us, for each one of us, a fool to the world. But we who believe know otherwise. This is a precious time to stir up the gifts given us. The holy people of God, faculty, staff, and students at the University of Scranton can dream of renewed birth because God's spirit dwells in us, powering us to always try anew. May God continue to bless our university. My dear friends, on this joyous occasion, let us offer our prayers to God on behalf of one another. For Bishop O'Hara and the Diocese of Scranton, that the inspiration that founded and sustained the university will continue to guide our work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In gratitude for the decades of service to the university by the Christian brothers, for their continued good work in the service of the people of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Jesuits and their willingness to accept the call to come to Scranton. Particularly, we pray in gratitude for their devotion over the 71 years that have followed. We pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For the service and sacrifice of the lay faculty and staff who are partners in living out our mission as a Catholic and Jesuit university, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For students, alumni, and parents of today and yesterday who continue to choose and sustain the University of Scranton, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For benefactors and friends who believe in and continue to support our mission, for all those who help to make possible the education we offer our students, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of Scranton and Northeastern Pennsylvania, whom we were founded to serve and who have helped the university to thrive these many years, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the university family who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all creation, source of all that is good, hear the prayers we bring before you this day. Grant that these, though unspoken, may be fulfilled with your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the well of his holy church. Recalling the day when you were pleased to fill this university with holiness, O Lord, we pray that you may make of us a sacrificial offering, always acceptable to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in this visible house, this university, you, that you have let us build, and where you never cease to show favor to a family on pilgrimage to you in this place, you wondrously manifest and accomplish the mystery of your communion with us. Here you have built for yourself a university that will serve your church, spread throughout the world, to grow ever more and more as the Lord's own body, till she reaches her fullness in the vision of peace, the heavenly city of Jerusalem. And so with the countless ranks of the blessed, in the temple of your glory, we praise you. We bless you and proclaim your greatness as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O oh Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make these gifts we bring to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, and with all your saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. My friends, at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Thanks for being here. Tom, peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please be seated. As we come forth to receive the Eucharist, I invite you to join us in singing Jesus, the living bread of God. Jesus, the living bread of God, Jesus, the saving cup of Christ. Every time we eat this bread, every time we drink this cup, we proclaim your glory until you come again. You are the bread of life. If we come to you, we will never be in need. If we believe in you, we will never thirst, and we will live forever. Jesus, the living bread of God, Jesus, the saving cup of Christ, every time we this bread. Every time we drink this cup, we proclaim your glory until you come again. You are the life of the world. If we come to you, we will never know death. If we eat of this bread, we will be renewed, and we will live forever. Jesus, the living bread of God, Jesus, the saving cup of Christ, Every time we eat this bread, every time we drink this cup, we proclaim your glory until you come again. You are the living bread, our bread from heaven, our food from above. If we eat and drink, 
we will be like you and we will live forever jesus the living bread of god jesus the saving cup of christ every time we eat this bread Every time we drink this cup, we proclaim your glory until you come again. You are the living Christ. If we follow you, we will see the face of God. If we die with you, we will rise again, and we will live forever. Jesus, the living bread of God, Jesus, the saving cup of Christ, Every time we eat this bread, every time we drink this cup, we proclaim your glory until you come again. Let us pray. May the people consecrated to you, O Lord, we pray, receive the fruits and joy of your blessing that the festive homage that have, we have offered here today in the body may redound upon them as spiritual gift through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A few announcements. Actually, not a few announcements, a few uh, just thank yous. First of all, to uh, Jane Lucas and the musical team over there, thank you so much. Uh, to our fabulous uh, Facilities personnel who set this up uh, somewhat at the last minute when suddenly everyone wanted to come to Mass on Monday at noon. Thank you. <laughs> also uh, to our uh, catering um, folks who are going to provide us with some great food. I, I also want to acknowledge the presence of uh, Father Tom Muldowney from the diocese, representing the diocese, and Bishop Van Barrett. Thank you for coming. And uh, most of you know Father Tom Roach, rector of the Jesuit community, my boss, uh, when I'm at least in the house. So let us uh, go forth uh, as Paul reminds us, rejoicing in the Lord. Let us now pray. May God, the Lord of heaven and earth, who has gathered you today in memory of the founding of this university, make you abound in heavenly blessings. Amen. And may he who has willed that all his scattered children be gathered together in his Son, 
grant that you may become his temple and his dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thus may you be made totally clean so that God may dwell within you and you may possess with all the saints the inheritance of eternal happiness. And may the blessing of the Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. My friends, our celebration, our Mass is concluded. Go forth and proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. As we conclude, you are all invited to lunch out on the Dion Green. Please join in singing our concluding hymn, Sing with all the saints in glory. Sing with all the saints in glory, sing the resurrection song. Death and sorrow, worth's dark story, to the former days belong. All around the clouds are breaking, soon the storms of time shall cease. In God's likeness we awaken, knowing everlasting peace. Oh, what glory far exceeding all that I has yet perceived. Holiest hearts for ages pleading, never that full joy conceived. God has promised, Christ prepares it, there on high our welcome waits. Every humble spirit shares it, Christ has passed the eternal gates. Life eternal, heaven rejoices, Jesus lives who once was dead. Shout with joy, O oh, deathless voices, child of God, lift up your head.